Welcome, physical geographers. We're going to talk about soils in Chapter 12 of the book today. So we essentially have soil as a component of the landscape. We also have regolith, a layer of loose, heterogeneous, superficial deposits covering all the solid rock. So we're going to basically going to go discuss both of those. We also have soil forming factors, geologic, climatic, topographic, biological, and time. Some of this we covered in uh, climate and weather in 112, if you had already taken the class, which tends to be the first 11 chapters of this book. Also, here's our general outline of the chapter components, inorganic, inorganic matter, so living and non-living, soil, air, and water, soil properties, texture, color, and structure, which we'll talk about those, colloids, cation exchange, acidity, alkalinity, and soil horizons. So we essentially have pedogenic reagents also, laterization, posylation, pleization, calcification, salinization, climate, and pedogenic regime, regimes, which we'll go into. We also have classification, soil taxonomy, and the mapping question. So we see global distribution of major soils, which we'll go into, and at the end of this chapter, we have some really nice maps to kind of show where that exists, especially in the United States. Um, Endosols, very little profile development, septosols, few diagnostic features, endosols, volcanic ash soils. Uh, I live in Castle Rock, we tend to have quite a bit of that. Um, where I live, this is an example, gel soils, uh, cold soils with permafrost, born in the north, organic soils with very wet sites, aridosols, dry climates, cracking clays and swine clays, we do have some of that in Colorado, vertisols, molosols. Um, dark soft soils of grasslands, you see that in kind of the high step areas in the interior of the United States, alpha soils, clay rich, B horizons, high, high base status, clay rich B horizons, low base status, or older soils. Continuation of major soils, distribution of soils in the United States were discussed, oxisols are highly weathered and leached, spotosols, soils of cool forested zones. So our definition of soil, relatively thin mix of in organic and organic materials. We see all types of um, composition as described in this slide. Um, essentially anywhere from hydro to air um, to inorganic and organic matter. Okay, so we have soil development through weathering, physical, um, water percolating. We have regolith, which is layer of broken down, partly decomposed particles. Covering the bedrock, as we talked about at the beginning of this chapter, it's kind of the loose composition on top of the soil. And then we're going to go into each factor. So geologic factor, parent material source of rock fragments in the soil, maybe bedrock, chemical and physical characteristics influencing the soil. Um, climatic factor, and each of these factors, I encourage you to go back and look at these in detail. Um, temperature, moisture, most influential soil formation factors. Uh, we see this as far as weather patterns over long periods of time affecting the soil. So generally chemical and biological processes um, accelerated by high temperatures and abundant moisture, and the converse is also true. It's not accelerated or decelerated with um, cooler temperatures. Topographic factor, so we basically see elevation um, terrain coming into play. So flat surfaces allow soil to develop deeper. Roll of slope and surface drainage, which we see in that slide. Biologic factor, so life in the soil, so basically life and organic matter as far as consumption um, and relief, and essentially um, life and death, basically being the key, key worms. And then we also have organisms such as earthworms that live in the soil. Okay, soils form real slowly, usually take over a very long period of time. Um, formed and reformed uh, basically takes much longer than we see as far as the human being alive. And then soil components, organic matter, and so we talked about inorganic matter. So this is more of living um, organisms. So we could have litter, leaves, twigs, stalks, other dead parts, humus, brown, um, 
decomposed residues, so forth. Um, all have uh, the basis of carbon and are tied to life. Okay, soil air, half the volume and average soil is made up of pore spaces. So we have air and water. Roughly speaking, air is about half of the open porous space in soil and water is usually half. So here we see sample, samples of water existing in the soil as far as percolation. So how much porosity is there in the soil exists. Um, soil most moisture can be moved around through gravity through surface tension flow um, held on top of the soil a very thin film of moisture bound to soil through adhesion or combined water held in chemical combination with soil minerals so it's actually kind of one matter if you will of water and basically the soil in terms of soil water processes we have field capacity remaining water filling pore spaces um, after gravitational waters float away wilting point, plants no longer able to extract moisture. And then leaching, water dissolves and carries nutrients down in the soil, so it basically causes the soil to be less valuable in terms of nutrients that are needed, especially for plant life. Alleviation, water percolates into the soil carrying fine particles of mineral matter. Downward, alleviation deposit of particles at lower soil level. So the soil water balance is very key. Relationship between gain and loss, storage of soil water. Really there's kind of a budget as far as what can be consumed and what is lost. And really that balance is pretty key in terms of the moisture that exists in the environment and plant life. We're gonna to touch on soil properties. So tell, the color basically is insightful as far as the soil's nature and capabilities. It can be stains caused by metallic or organic matter several different degradations, different meanings of them. Kind of touch on that a little bit in the lab. Texture, so essentially how does it feel? Um, soil is composed of many particles, various sizes, smaller separates, coarser particles, clay particles, so forth. We essentially can see a texture broken down in terms of the texture triangle, which we have to the right. There are really three principles that separate um, the textures, clay, sand, and silt. Uh, we also have loam, which is texture, which is really none of the three um, principal separates. And it's essentially, it's an even mixture mix, most productive for plants. So it's kind of a balanced combination. We have structure for soil properties, peds, clumps of individual particles in most soils. Um, we see it kind of gathered together. Structure influences how water air organisms move through the soil. It's really classified as far as um, what it looks like, blocky, platy, spheroidal, prismatic, and it basically impacts aeration and drainage. Samples of structure, here we see some pictures of uh, spheroidal, plate-like, block-like, prism-like, affecting porosity and permeability. Now we're touching on soil chemistry, colloids, um, we have a few things to talk about with that. Colloids, acidity, alkalinity, and soil development, um, so forth. Cations, also. Um, so anyway, colloids, organic and inorganic particles representing chemical active portion of soil. So we do have some basically chemical activity. Cation exchange, traction of cations by negatively charged colloids. Um, basically can have bonding. We could have cation exchange capacity, which causes certain um, particles to bond with other particles. We have acidic and alkalinity, so acids and bases, chemical solutions, or certain eons are dissolved in water. Um, certain types of plant life do well in alkaline types of soils, and some do better in acidic. Alkaline, for instance, potatoes tend to do well in there. And then we basically can see different types of composition affecting the acids and bases. Now we're going to discuss the development of soil through depth and time, which are their dimensions, also known as soil profiles. So it's really four processes that deepen and age soils. So we have addition, loss, translocation, and transformation. 
which basically has to do with what actually happens with the soil over time. And forming factors influence that rate through processes. Then horizons, as far as soil profiles, distinct recognizable layers, which we see on the right. We see uh, mineral matter, alleviation, leaching, clay, iron, aluminum, partially altered in unweathered parent material. We see several different categories of it. And then profile is a vertical cross section from surface down. So horizons is horizontal, as the name implies, and profile is vertical. Here are the various layers that we briefly discussed on the previous slide. So we can see different pieces of that topsoil, alluvial, regolith, bedrock, canberry. Essentially, there's many influences through time, water. Without water, no profiles. You don't really see the vertical movement, and soil development, all horizons would develop down well drain gentle slopes. It would be ideal, doesn't always occur though. Now we have immature soils containing certain horizons moving into other horizons, that kind, of, that kind of thing. Usually we can see this as far as the surface going downward within the profile. We can see that variation. So now we're going to discuss the soil forming environmental settings, also uh, establish and organize as pedogenic regimes. So we have laterization, brick red colored soil created in warm most regions, prominent in, prominent in tropics and subtropics. Podzolization, gray soils in cool moist regions. We can really see the climate and basically setting of the uh, location as far as influencing the type of regime um, classification we have, and glutization, so waterlogged cool climates, poor drainage, acidic, muddy. Um, okay, calcification, so those are drier evaporative reasons. We get into like semi-arid climates, drier climates, and salinization, soils of moist deficit regions. So we see salt left behind. Um, okay. And then Climate pedogenic regions regimes uh, based on secondarily on vegetation cover. So vegetation cover really influences um, the other activities that can occur, influencing the profile of the soil. What happens to it over long periods of time? We can see these regimes established on this global map pretty well. It's established, we see on the interior, we see regimes that uh, more of the oxisols, and then we tend to see um, certain types of uh, regimes occur on the coast and the interior and further north as heavily influenced based on where they exist within the world. As we talked about settings influencing composition of major soils, so we see a theoretical sort of pathways. 12 order of soils and basically the type of soil it is usually inf is influenced by where it exists in the world. So anisols least developed due to age of cold and septisols. You see a great map of this at the end of the presentation here. Andisols developed from volcanic ash. So we see different places. Uh, gelisols, little profile due to cold conditions. Histosols, organic matter. Usually have interior good growth areas or it is all soils of dry lands. We see deserts frequently on the west coast. Vertisols, mostly clay, mollisols, hummus, and cations. Alpha sols, mature with surface clay. Um, Eutosols, weathered and leached of nutrients. Spotosols, alluvial layer. We see this in the interior. Um, uh, South America and also Africa. Uh, we see it more in northern and South America and then sub Saharan in Africa. Oxisol is mostly weathered and leached through laterization. And then here we have a pretty good map that focuses more on the United States as opposed to just the world, um, as opposed to the entire world, I should say. Um, so hopefully this gives you some good insight on soils. You can see all the soils and the soils and so forth.